talk about that fairly quickly before it. I want to invite uh, Dr. Jim Parham up to talk about uh, the screen health. Okay. We got we are 15 minutes already, so I just I'm I I'm gonna give you time after we have public testimony. I just want to make sure that we have enough time to get, get everybody to testify. And then we can go back. Thank you, indulgence with Mr. Parham a little bit because he's the one that can actually speak to the health of the stream. And based on the discussions in the last uh, item, a lot of talk about the precautionary principle and, and making sure there's no harm. And I think Dr. Parham can address that. So we, we won't go very long, but just well, why a little don't you, Why don't you do that after the public testimony? We can do that. Okay. We can do that. Well, you got the idea. Okay. <laughs> So I'll wrap it up, our, uh, our part uh, really is why are these hydros uh, important in Kauai? Hydros are important to all hours of renewable generation source, so not to say that is, but they work when the sun's not shining, when it's raining, like we've seen an awful lot this year, when it, it really uh, complements our, our high levels of solar. So sun's out, rainy weather, we're producing renewables from, from the water when we can't get from the sun, which we need to reach our uh, 100% targets for the state. Uh, it's clean climate benefits, hydro, water is released into the stream, more so, considerably more so into the uh, North Fork after the actions last year, and the rest goes into the South Fork. And of course, hydro is a defined beneficial use under the state water code. Uh, a quick look at our uh, dispatch down at the bottom. This is our 24 hour dispatch for Kauai. And you can see we, we hit a peak about eight o'clock of peak generation use, eight o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock at night. But the uh, yellow is solar, and you can see, of course, solar is mainly producing when the sun shines out. Uh, some of it's going through batteries now moving into night. But the key part is down at the bottom, that blue line, that's hydro. And you can see hydro sitting there, our hydro portfolio for Kauai, sitting there producing all the time, 24 hours a day. It's a, it is a core part of our generation needs on the island. And, I don't want that to be lost in, in some of the discussions. We need that hydro, it's base load, essentially base load power that's there helping us meet our renewable, renewable needs. We also have on the next slide, uh, this shows price of hydro down at that, that bottom line shows the Waiahi hydro uh, generation cost. Uh, the next one up is the AES solar project that's gonna come online in, over the next week or so, <coughs> rolling all the way up to diesel the top end, so you can see the, the radical price benefits for uh, the people of Hawaii from hydro versus the other technology, including the modern uh, solar and solar storage. Next slide. Uh, outside of, uh, just briefly on outside of uh, uh, renewable energy, there's also agriculture, drinking water, ecotourism. The water that is being lost and going through, and even the non-lost water is helping recharge the uh, uh, aquifer. And we also talked about DHHL lands. This, water, this hydro provides water when it converts over there that can be used by DHHL. Um, I see Grow Farm is here, so they can talk about their uh, use. But there's also, I hope you guys had a chance to see testimony from East Kauai Water Users Cooperative, Kauai County Farm Bureau, and the Kauai Chamber of Commerce that, that, have, that have testified to the importance of these hydros and the water source to, to their operations and thousands of acres of farmland. And, and, uh, drinking water system. Uh, we really jump to the, uh, the last one, the uh, important takeaways from our side. KIUC as a co-op understands the preservation of our natural resources is critical. And we, we, we focus on a balance and feel the focus on balance between uses is necessary here. We realize there's gonna be uh, some loss of water under the staff recommendation, but we know we need to balance our environmental and, and energy production and the other side so we understand your, your job and, and appreciate it. We also want uh, to emphasize that we have this restored uh, Malka to Makai uh, stream flow. As uh, Jason said, even the, uh, the new gauging shows the water is in the stream at all times now. And we, we continue to emphasize continued use of uh, hydro is important for Kauai, not just for KIUC and the electric users, but for the entire island. And with that, I, if there's any questions, I can take them. Otherwise, we'll uh, have Dr. Tyler show up later. Thank you. Thank you. We'll save questions for uh, um, Okay, we're going to go through uh, names. Um, Chair, are you testifying on this item? Yes, I am. Okay, why don't you go first? Thank you, Chair. <coughs> Good 
Good afternoon, Chair Case, board members, council. Scott Enright, chairperson for the Hawaii Department of Agriculture. So it's the department's position that this is a balanced use of, of resources and one that's sustainable. So I'm not going to take your time because David Bissell just pointed out all the different end uses for agriculture here. But maintaining ditch systems is something the Department of Agriculture does around the state. It's exceedingly expensive. And so having someone on Kauai who's maintaining those old ditch system infrastructures for agriculture is exceedingly important. So the department is favorable of you moving forward and um, approving this option if you find to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Okay. So, some of the names signed up here I think are for Hawaii Island Matters. So one of the two that's Hawaii Island, I assume we have the number of the um, Anne Frederick, is that for Waimua River? And again, uh, please limit your testimony to three minutes. Good afternoon, board members. My name is Annie Frederick. I'm the executive director for the Chan. <coughs> I 
Oh, my taco. Oh, you guys sound like you just took a lunch break. Let me try that again. Aloha, my taco. Aloha. Aloha. Mahalo to you. Thank you so much for your time, board members. Um, I'm going to stick to my testimony so I don't go too far off course. I know we've all had a long day so far. So, um, My name is Malia Kahale Chan, and I was born and raised in the Mokua Puna and the Akupua of Wailua Nuya Hoano. I'm a mother, educator, and cultural practitioner, and I've taken many work hours off to try to convey to each of you the cultural significance of the water source of Wailua Nuya Hoano and the sacred people of our Mokupunis, Wai Ale Ale and Kobai Ikuhaha. The sacred waters of Wai Ale Ale and the life giving gore that they fill are revered throughout this Pai Aino and are recounted in numerous mo'olelo, like the great epic of Ko'i's first mo'i wahine, Ka'ili Lao Kekoa, or our well-known hula admission chant, Kunihi Kamauna, which recounts part of Hidiaka and Pele's journey throughout our islands. This is a great example of this. Myself, my ohana, my kupuna, and my keiki have had the honor of spending countless hours visiting these waters for generations to play, Offer ho'okupu, mele, oli, and to gather mea kanu for le and pohaku to carve into hoi pounders, ulumaika. In addition to the cultural significance of wai ale ale and the fact that it produces some of the most pristine waters in the world, the streams that feed off of wai ale ale support a native habitat. The endangered newcomb snail, o'opu, hihivai, and a variety of indigenous native plant and animal life essential to a healthy native ecosystem. To even suggest that diverting these waters have had no cultural impact, as Beth Tokioka has suggested, is both absurd and a disrespect to the Hawaiian culture. Make no mistake, if you are a practitioner, you are also an observer. And I think we saw the value of that observation in the last um, case regarding the limu of Eva. And we're able to see firsthand through observation the negative impact such divergence have <coughs> on not just our vai, but also our aina. It is important to note that the public trust doctrine applies to these waters, yet there has been no analysis that has been shared with us of the impact of traditional, customary, and native Hawaiian water rights. Yelenar, you have a clear duty to consider these impacts before any revocable permit should be considered. Thank you. Is that it? Mm -hmm. That was three minutes. Yep. I'll <laughs> As a makainana of Wailua Nuyahuana, I'm requesting that BLNR not approve the renewal of RP7340 for the two upper diversions of Wai Ale Ale Waikoko streams, which are located in State Conservation District. It took so called vandals, I prefer to refer to them as Kanaka Aloha Aina, to restore connectivity. Yeah. Thumbs up. Wow. So I hear all morning and listen to people have four, like 14 minute testimonies and I have like maybe one more minute to finish and I came all the way from Kauai. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sorry now, but we have a lot of people to get to, so. Uh, she can take oh. my minute. Anybody want to give her a minute? Yeah. I'll give her my minute. <laughs> Mahalo nui. I appreciate it. As... <clears throat> Anyways, it took vandals, so-called vandals. But in my mana'o, that's a heroic feat yeah. to restore Moka to Makai flow. Setting a low ball temporary restoration at 30% is insufficient. The truth is the decisions that you make today have far-reaching implications beyond the 21st century. The future of infrastructure, housing, DHHL, ADC, and Native Hawaiian rights. You must consider, consider these systems of diversion <coughs> from a much broader perspective and how these decisions will impact the future of our keiki. <coughs> By denying KIUC renewal of RP7340, I believe 
you can set KIUC's hydro diversion on a more just and sustainable um, path for the 21st century. As seen in recent water decisions in East and West Maui, great strides have been made in righting historical injustices of water rights violations in Hawaii. And we have faith that you will offer Kauai the same respect. Thank That's you. it. Mahalo nui. Thank Mahalo. you.